This is the second video in a series about excretion. In this one, we're going to be focusing on the gross anatomy of the urinary system, and we're going to be looking at the anatomy of the nephrons. In the third video, we'll be looking at how the nephrons operate to, in order to produce urine for excretion. The learning objectives for this lesson are detailed here. We are going to be looking at the anatomy for this one, as I've said. So we need to understand the different parts of the urinary system and of the nephron. Once you understand these things, we will apply them and look at their function in the next lesson after this. As ever, your pre-reading is pages 172 to 175 of your textbook, and by the end of this lesson, you should be able to complete the notes on pages 23 to 25 of your booklet. These are the key words for this lesson. Again, that they are all um, anatomical structures, and it's important that you know them by the end of this lesson. To help you with that, we'll be drawing some diagrams, so make sure that you have some paper and pens. Okay, the first thing we're going to be looking at is the gross anatomy of the urinary system. The urinary system is comprised of two kidneys, here and here. Um, we have associated blood vessels, so we have the renal artery and the renal vein. Now, the renal vein in blue takes blood away from the kidneys and goes back to the heart via the vena cava. The renal arteries, located here and here in red, direct blood towards the kidney that will undergo filtration. The blood that um, leaves the, the, the heart from the left ventricle travels down the aorta and feeds into the kidneys. These yellow structures on the top are actually the adrenal glands. They're found on top of the kidneys, and you'll learn more about them in the year 12 course. This structure that connects the kidney to the bladder is called the ureter. Now, it's really important that you understand that the ureter is spelt R-E-T-E-R, -E -E sorry, U-R-E-T-E-R. -E -E There's no H in there, that's a different structure. So please don't get the ure ureter confused with the urethra. Now, the structure that connects the ureter to the urethra is where the urine is held, and that is the bladder. Now, the urinary system has a couple of functions. The first one is to regulate fluid in the body and to make sure that the composition of blood is healthy, so it's, it's chiefly um, associated with the removal of toxins from the blood. The second function is the formation of ure urea and then urine, which is then excreted. In this diagram, we're looking at the kidney in more detail and we've got a cross section of it. So it's like the kidney's been cut in half and we're looking at the inside of it. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is this outer thin layer of the kidney. So when you look at a kidney in real life, the outer side looks uh, paler and shiny if it's healthy. And this outer layer is called the renal cortex. So the word renal, um, we always associate with the kidneys. So this is the renal cortex on the outside. Looking towards the middle, this area here, we can see that we have these triangular shaped structures. These are called the renal medulla. So this middle part is the renal medulla. The outer part is the renal cortex. Now these little pyramid things are actually called renal pyramids and each of these renal pyramids comprise together to make the renal medulla. Now in between the renal pyramids we have these um, column structures, hence the name renal columns. And these contain many, many blood vessels, and that's what gives the renal medulla its dark red colour. Next thing we're looking at is the renal artery, as I've talked about in the 
previous slide, the renal artery takes blood in towards the kidney and it branches off from the aorta. So it's important that you understand that blood that moves away from the heart towards body or organs is always going to be an artery. So you should be able to recognize that in diagrams in your exam. Blood that is fed into the kidney goes through the renal artery so therefore blood that comes out and heads back towards the heart leaves in a renal vein. So once that blood, that blood has been filtered within the kidney, leftover contents will pass from the kidney itself down the ureter and it collects in this area of the kidney before it goes into the ureter and this area of the kidney is called the renal pelvis. And from the renal pelvis, liquid, which is now urine, is carried down the ureter and it heads towards the bladder. So now that we've looked at the overall gross structure of the urinary system, we're going to be focusing in on the nephron. Now, the nephron is a microscopic structure found within the kidney and there are a lot of keywords associated with this and we're going to talk about each of these keywords in this next section of the video. So first of all what is a nephron? Well if we look here at the picture of the kidney again we can recognize all those structures. We have got the renal cortex, we have the medulla, we have the renal pyramids and the renal columns. We also have the ureter and the renal pelvis here. And we've taken away the, ren the renal vein, but we're just showing the renal artery because that's the blood that is taken into the kidney. Now we know that the renal arteries carry blood that is being filtered in the kidney itself. So we want to look at what happens um, um, in that little filtration unit. And that's what the nephron is. So if we look at this section here outlined in black in this triangle, if we zoom in, this is what we actually see. So we can see the outer part at the top, which is the renal cortex, and then this darker part underneath, which is the renal medulla. We can see these pale yellow structures that are all twisted and turned around. That is this thing here, and this thing here is a one unit of the filtering system of the, of the kidney. This is a nephron. So when we look at the kidney, within the kidney itself, there are millions and millions of these tiny filtration units called nephrons. Now, there are about 1.2 million nephrons in each kidney and kidneys are about the size of the palm of your own hand. So it gives you an idea just how small they are. Now again, why do we have millions of nephrons and not just one large one? Again, it's for increased rate of filtration because each small one will yield a larger surface area to volume ratio. You'll notice in this diagram here that we have lots of um, capillaries wrapped around the nephron. And again, this is so that we have rapid exchange of nutrients um, and substances going into and out of the nephron and the blood vessels, similar to the type of processes we talked about in digestion and the respiratory system. Here we've got a large picture of a nephron and we're going to be exploring each part of it. So when we start looking at the nephron, let's look at the left-hand side of this picture. We have got the renal artery, and then we have a small branch of an artery. And because it's a small branch of an artery, it's called an arteriole. Now, if you look at the arrow on this diagram, the, the branch is going in towards this large knot of blood capillaries. So because it's going into, and it's at the start, it's called the afferent arteriole. And we can see on the other side of that knot, you have um, an arrow showing a blood vessel leaving it. It's still a branch of an artery, so it's still an arteriole, 
but it's leaving, so it's the efferent arterial. So entering this knot of blood capillaries, we have the afferent arterial, and leaving it, we have the efferent arterial. The knot of blood capillaries itself is known as a glomerulus. So the glomerulus is a knot of blood capillaries and it sits inside this backwards C-shaped cup. And that C-shaped cup is called a Bowman's capsule labelled here, but the more updated name for it is a glomerular capsule or a renal capsule. So, so far, we know that a branch of the renal artery that's feeding into the start of the nephron is the afferent arterial. The knot of blood capillaries found at the start of the nephron is known as the glomerulus, and that sits inside a glomerular capsule. And then the knot, the, after the knot of blood capillaries, we have the afferent arterial leaving. Now, if we carry on looking at the nephron, we can see that the first part after the glomerular capsule is this um, tube, which is all twisting and turning. Now, because it's close to the glomerular capsule and the glomerulus, it's in close proximity. So we say it's the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal because it's close proximity, convoluted because it's all twisted and turned, and it's tubule. So proximal convoluted tubule then straightens up into this really long hairpin loop. And this hairpin loop is called the loop of Henley. Now the loop of Henley has two branches. We have the one that's heading down, so it's therefore known as the descending limb of the loop of Henley. And then on the way up, we have the ascending limb of the loop of Henley. After the ascending limb, we then get into another twisted and turned tubule, and this time it's quite distant from the glomerulus and the glomerular capsule, hence it gets called the distal convoluted tubule. After the distal convoluted tubule, we end up in this long straight duct called the collecting duct. The collecting ducts will all join up to form the ureter. So this area is found in the renal pelvis. Now, as you can see, these capillaries wrap around the tubules. So they're called the peritubular capillaries. Okay, so there's lots of terminology there. So to help us understand this, what I'd like to do is get a piece of paper, pause the video and draw this simple diagram. Once you've drawn the diagram, I would like you to label the glomerular capsule, the proximal convoluted tubule, the distal convoluted tubule, loop of Henle and collecting duct. Pause the video here and see if you can do that. And then once you've done, we'll go over the answers. Okay, so hopefully you were able to do that. And here are the answers for each section of the nephron structure. At the moment, we haven't um, labelled any of the blood vessels. We simply got the basic anatomical structure of one nephron. Now we're going to start looking at the renal tubule and the associated parts. So the renal tubule is everything you see in this gold colour. So that's what we've just drawn. Okay, now we're going to be looking at the next part, which is looking at the blood vessels. Now, get a red pen and I want you to draw on your diagram and label the afferent arterial, the efferent arterial, glomerulus and the peritubular capillary network. You might want to go back and have a look at the images on the previous slides, or you can try and draw this from memory. So with a red pen, let's draw those blood vessels. Okay, so hopefully you were able to draw those blood vessels. 
and you have drawn a quick sketch of um, something that looks like this. Now remembering the direction of the blood flow as we go into and out of the, um, the glomerulus, we're going to start over here. So this is the afferent arterial. If you haven't already done so in your diagram, I'd like you to make this um, arterial wider than the efferent arterial. So here, we want to really make that distinction that the afferent arterial is wider than the efferent arterial. And we'll talk about why that's important in a second. So we need to label this knot of capillaries, which sits inside the glomerular capsule. So that, of course, is the glomerulus. We then have these um, blood capillaries that wrap around the tubules. They are known as the peritubular capillaries. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. So we've understood some of the basic anatomy of the urinary system and of the nephron. Before we finish this lesson, I'd like you to please use your textbook to help you summarize what you've learned so far. There's a really good summary on page 189 of your textbook, and I'd like you to use the information on page 173 to complete this table, which is found on page 25 of your class notes. It's really important that you are able to confidently identify these structures and describe a little bit about what they do before we go on to the third lesson in this series.